Bureau of Labs, this is a, a public health laboratory. One of our models is that uh, the client is always first, the patient is always first. Each specimen is tied to a person. We're interested in, in the outcome, the fact that what we're doing has impact upon the, the people. If you remember that, then you know that you're trying to help somebody get better. I think anyone working in the clinical field wants to help uh, society. And they know that the results that they turn out impact people's lives. I want to do the best I can to help out a child. I enjoy helping people. I've, I've always been interested in science. I was a nerd as a child. It's kind of like a mystery too. Like you see those you know, CSI shows, you're trying to figure out a mystery. pretty much do everything. We have uh, two divisions, chemistry and toxicology, and infectious diseases. The chemistry toxicology division includes laboratories that test for metals, including lead and mercury. We run over like 40,000 samples for uh, lead in blood. As we test uh, blood spots drawn from newborns and born throughout the whole state. We're the only lab in the state that does that testing. Analytical chemistry is also part of the chemistry division. We analyze for other chemicals that humans might be exposed to either accidentally or intentionally. And the samples we analyze include fish and human samples predominantly. The second division is infectious diseases. We try to help hospitals, doctors, laboratories into diagnosing infectious diseases. Monitoring what disease is occurring, who's getting sick, are there new things coming out that we weren't prepared for. We are the eyes and ears of CDC. There are lots and lots of infectious diseases. There are foodborne, there are waterborne, there are vector-borne, vector meaning in the insects, or animal-borne, zoonotic. We do things like tuberculosis testing and antibiotic resistance testing, sexually transmitted diseases. Legionella testing, Lyme disease, uh, syphilis. Outbreak investigations, pertussis, and various other diseases. We have got to get the answer right because we're the last stop before it goes to CDC. Is this disease progressing in a community, and how can we control it? That's the public health aspect of it, and that's where my division works. Newborn screening is an incredible public health program. It's a statewide service that we provide and really does touch just about everybody in the state's lives. The end goal is to help contribute to the uh, well-being of a child. We screen for 49 genetic conditions with just a little bit of care that uh, a child with that disease could now develop normally. That's a real strong driving force. When the swine flu hit, which is now called um, 2009 H1N1 pandemic, the state labs were already prepared with a standard CDC protocol for testing for influenza. Influenza is a disease that happens all the time. And so the new reagents that we needed to test for swine flu were rolled out to us within a matter of weeks. And we were able to implement that assay right away, which was very exciting for us because we could give a name to something then. We could give the clients an actual diagnosis. You know, a pandemic comes and goes, but you need to have capacity to support the diagnostic and education prevention programs uh, that the health department serves and uh, all the time. That's very critical. A huge role that they play is uh, in education and helping laboratorians and citizens in the state understand what are emerging issues that need need to be better understood. Well, there's a lot of things we do that probably is a little bit uh, not understood. We are a well-kept secret. Before I um, applied for this job, I was relatively unaware that it went on. One of the missions that we have is to educate people. We are there, you know, they may be in the hospital or they may be going to the health department to get themselves tested for something, but a lot of times that gets sent to us. Without the Bureau of Laboratories, we would not be able to ensure that when you get bit by Fido or get bit by a bat, that you aren't going to develop rabies down the line. We help protect 
the public. Without the Bureau of Laboratories, we would not be able to track outbreaks of foodborne disease. We can tell, say by eating this hamburger, you found this E. coli, for example. You can go back, do the ERCSI type of investigation, and come down, pinpoint what food was implicated, and you can ask for a recall. It may be a chemical emergency. It may be a bioterrorism alert that has uh, uh, been sounded. Uh, it may be the phone call that has to do with a uh, suspected outbreak in a, in a hospital. Afternoon, Bureau of Labs. This is Jules. How can I help you? Whatever it has been, that immediate ability to contact somebody who's extremely educated and highly expert in their field. These are not people who wait, you know, till eight or nine in the morning when the office is open. They're right there, right then. And there's never a word of complaint or a hesitation. We take our jobs very seriously. We are constantly reacting to new emerging viruses, new and emerging diseases. In, in that regard, we're always pretty much on duty. We're functioning all the time and kind of behind in a behind the scenes capacity and there's a, there's a lot of things that, that maybe people don't see or don't realize that are going on. I've experienced a number of different public health emergencies and the first person I call will be the director of laboratories, say, or the, the head of the communicable diseases division and they are the first to pick up their phones no matter what time of night. We have people cross-trained to be able to do testing in other areas that maybe they're not uh, ordinarily uh, working in. We're one of 10 national laboratories that aids the CDC in being prepared to analyze large-scale exposures to chemicals. I work as part of the TB genotyping program, which is contracted through the CDC. We were given a grant to do testing on positive tuberculosis isolates. And there's only two labs in the U.S. that do this testing. It is our job to run the DNA analysis on them and to identify and group them according to their strain identification. They are the genotyping group for the Eastern United States. I think I have the most variety and interesting challenges that there are to be had. And every day when I wake up, I'm wondering about what's going to happen at the lab today. I've gained tons of experience with, you know, all the different technologies. It's something the Bureau of Labs is trying to do is mentoring, bringing programs to schools. So there's a wealth of knowledge of people that have experience in everything that we do. Look at it. Science is all around us. Love for science. That's number one. You must have it. And number two, dedication to public service. Without a state public health laboratory, the recognition of outbreaks and health threats goes unrecognized and then you find yourself in an epidemic situation. We provide a pretty vital service. We feel like it's our job to get it out on a timely manner because we do a lot of testing here. For example, we do rabies testing. Rabies is one of the gruesome diseases that I know of. If we do detect, if there is a positive specimen, we get on the phone, call the animal control office, who get in touch with the patient. They are saved from rabies. Our, our, our biggest, most important resource is us. We, we got your back. We're uh, on the forefront of keeping us healthy. Knowing that you're helping somebody, you know, you may not know who that person is, but for the good of the person and for the good of the community, you are doing something that's helping. That's what's impressed me most uh, with these folks. These, these are not uh, laboratorians who go into work at you know, a specified time, go home and, and, and forget everything. Uh, these are professionals who are on call 24-7. Check our record. I think our record speaks for itself. We try to control communicable diseases, but we want to make enthusiasm more <laughs> infectious. <laughs>